Rites of passage that mark the coming of age tend to consist of three stages, and the stages are slightly different for boys and girls. Boys exit society, transform into men, and then re-enter society, while girls become enclosed, transform into women, and then re-emerge, like butterflies. And among the people who inhabited the coastal forest of the Cosmic Egg, this pattern also held. The boys grow up in the communal nest, together with their sisters, raised by their mother, aunts, grandmother and grandaunts. But once they reach the age of 15 years or so, it's time for them to leave. They don't take anything with themselves, and after they bid a goodbye to the members of their nest, they set out into the forest, naked and alone. Their goal is to reach another woman's nest, usually a few days of travel away. On the way, they have to procure their own food, fashion their own tools, and make sure that they don't get eaten by a tiger or murdered by a human, because while the women do want new young men arriving in their territory, the men already inhabiting it do not want any additional competition. So while the women prohibit murder and punish those who violate their law, men still do it when they are sure that no one had seen the boy and no one will ever find out. But if a boy avoids all peril and safely reaches a woman's nest, his next step is to introduce himself and ask the chief of the nest if he can settle on her land, which is a permission she always grants. Then the boy builds himself a little nest up a tree, and with that done, he is officially a man, and he can start courting the women by presenting them with gifts. If a woman accepts a gift, a relationship begins, and she visits the man in his nest at night, bringing him a gift as well. The entire relationship features a continuous exchange of gifts, and the moment one of the participants turns a gift down, the relationship ends. Women tend to have several partners at a time, and consider all of them to be the fathers of every resulting child, and the gifts of fruit, meat and honey that men bring help to feed the children of the nest. The men prefer multiple partners as well, and the gift exchange that happens during a relationship is the means by which men obtain goods such as knives and cloth but the women in the nests neither weave nor work with metals. Further inland, away from the coastal jungle, they live an agricultural people who create ornate fabrics and cast bronze. After every harvest, they travel to the nest of the head chief of the local mangrove people and present her with gifts. Some of those gifts are agricultural produce, and the rest is prestige items, such as fabric and ornate knives in ornate sheaves. All of this goes to the chief, because she is running an extortion racket. She has the ability to curse agricultural lands with infertility and send plague upon cities. Every community that presents her with gifts will be spared, and every community that doesn't will suffer. But the chief does not keep the gifts to herself, she redistributes them to all the women's nests that are part of her chiefdom, and the boundaries of these chiefdoms are always shifting, because all women have some amount of magical ability, and they acquire that ability during their coming of age. When a girl starts menstruating for the first time, her initiation into womanhood begins. She enters an enclosed ritual space that lies at the heart of the nest, and an important part of the ritual is drinking a special drug concoction that makes her plunge into a dream, where her soul leaves her body and travels outside of the shell of the cosmic egg. She finds herself in a world of silence and darkness, inhabited by supernatural spirits, and her task is to grab one of these spirits and drag it inside the egg, and then into her own body. And the way the journey the boys undertake has its dangers, the girl's journey has its dangers as well. Sometimes girls' souls float away from the shell of the world and cannot find the way back, 
and the body, left without a soul, simply dies. But if all goes according to plan and the girl wakes up, the rituals continue. After her emergence, the girl will find that she can make protective charms and cast curses. It will be the power of the spirit that she grabbed, and the strength of that power will depend on the spirit. But the women of the coastal forests see those spirits as something that helps them to conceive children, and see their ability to do magic as the natural result of being women. They chanced upon the recipe for the drug concoction entirely by accident, and they don't share it with anyone, and they themselves don't realize that anyone in this world would be able to do magic if they dragged a supernatural spirit into their own body. Or at least, that's what it was like for a time. I don't know where history went after that.